Hey, everybody. First of all, I want to say thank you guys so much. I've finally hit 200 subscribers. I would have never thought this, you know, would have happened. Uh, I'm almost at one year for this channel, which is uh, going to be coming up in the next like month or so, I believe. I have to double check that. But uh, yeah, we're almost at one year and we're already at 200 plus subscribers. I do want to do something special for you guys. So at 250 subscribers, I will be doing some sort of subscriber special, 250 sub special. And then uh, I'll probably be doing my next sub special at 500 if we, we eventually get there, which I'm hoping for, which would be real nice. And uh, it's cool, you know, I could just do this and uh, just for fun and you guys enjoy it. It's something that's really cool to me. Now, to get into this battle, you may see that the quality of this battle is a little bit different than something that you may have seen before on my channel, which I usually use a camera. So my buddy LJ Darkrai, he hooked me up. He said that he could record a battle for me. So I said, hey man, this battle, do, do this one for me because this one's going to be a good one. And uh, it's actually against Anima. You guys may have heard of Anima. She's really blowing up in the community right now. She was found by Xenon. And he gave her a shout out, and you know, dude, good choice, literally, uh, she has good content, she's very entertaining in her let's plays, her battles are fun to watch, so I highly advise you guys to check him out, LJ, your link is going to be in the description, go check him out, Anima, your link is going to be in the description, guys, go check her out, and today's battle is going to be a mixed tier battle, we're going to be doing 1 OU, 2 UU, 2 RU, and 1 NU, which I was very excited about, because, you know, it gives me a chance to use some OU Pokemon, uh, because I literally, I, I'm not a big fan of the OU meta, but doing mixed tier lets me get, you know, a little taste of those OU Pokemon. So, my OU, I'm going to be using Mega Gardevoir. Now, this Mega Gardevoir does have a trick up its sleeve, and you will get to see it in action. If you did watch that Saturday, Saturday Night Live, where I had to explain it because I didn't get to use it in action, then you'll get to see it today. Also, my UU Pokemon, we have Kingdra, and we're going to be running with Chandelure because I love the two of them. I haven't used Kingdra in a very long time, and Chandelier, it's just one of my favorite Pokemon to use overall. My walls for RU, I got my Rhyperior, and I'm also using Electros. Electros is going to be running, like, bulky offensive with an Assault Vest. Uh, my Leftovers Rhyperior. And finally, the last part of the team is going to be Hooters, my Noctowl, uh, which is my, my special set as well. I got the Psycho Shift, the Nightshade, Roost, and the Defog. And uh, that's going to be in there too, because I don't want rocks to be up. Just because I don't want it to chip away at my Chandelure, because uh, Chandelure is a threat, and I could deal with most of most of her team with it. So I definitely don't want to have that switching pressure in there. And uh, her team is looking pretty solid. She has Gengar, which is going to be a huge threat to me. Mega Agron, Moltres, uh, the Gramble, which is going to do a lot of work to me. Uh, Hitmontop and Swamper, which is a huge wall. But we're going to get into this battle. Now, what's going to happen is she's going to lead off with the Mega Agron. I'm like, all right, what I can do here is I can lead off with my Electros. I'm not running Volt Switch because I don't want any momentum to be stopped by, you know, Pokemon such as Swampert. So she is going to Mega up and uh, she's going to end up just going, you know, simple play. She's going to go Stealth Rocks first turn. She knows that it's going to wear down my team, cause more offensive pressure, and uh, it's really going to hinder my my chandelier so I'm just gonna end up going for a u-turn I could have also gone for a flamethrower I am running mixed electros so uh, that definitely would have done some good damage it is super effective even though it does have filter and they usually run you know more offensive like uh, adamant natured or you know just defensive you know bold nature uh, mega agron so I'm gonna go into chandelier I understand that the rocks are up I did just take 25% of damage but I figured I could threaten her out with a fire blast and then you know get a free sub up on the switch out, but it turns out she calls my bluff. Uh, she's gonna end up going for an earthquake. I'm like, okay, here's my plan. I'm just gonna go for a fire blast because this mega aggron, I really don't want to deal with it. I don't have too many ways to deal with it. And my chandelier, I, it's okay if I take this risky play because I still carry the grass knot on my electros to deal with the swamper later on. Turns out she lives, she lives a chandelier fire blast on like literally two percent. And she ends up going for the roar, predicting me to go for another sub or to switch out and just shuffle my team around a little bit. Now, I do get shuffled into Rhyperior here. And now, I end up going for a Rock Blast over an Earthquake in case she wanted to predict my Earthquake and go into the Gengar and then threaten me out that way. Because I still don't know if her Gengar is carrying Energy Ball. 
which I know it's not, you know, too uncommon. I have seen it before, and I have fallen for it, and it's taken me out, and I didn't want to deal with that because I still need my Rhyperior for later on. Now, she's going to go into the Hitmon top. This is going to threaten me out. There is an Intimidate, so I, I would rather switch than get an un or an Intimidator Earthquake off. So I'm actually going to switch out because I know these guys get Rock Slide and I know they get uh, Stone Edge. So I didn't want to switch into Chandelure, predicting her to go for a high jump kick. And then, you know, me losing my Chandelure, not only taking another 25%, but uh, also uh, just taking a hit that would be super effective on me. And I didn't want that. So now she's going to predict me to go for a U-turn here, go into the Grand Bull where not only am I intimidated, but it's also resisted. But I'm just going to go for a Thunderbolt, which is perfect because now... I have just punched a huge hole in the Gramble. Now it's below 50%. It can't take another Thunderbolt, and she's going to want to keep it around. Now she is going to switch back into her Hitmon top because it is going to be able to take the Thunderbolt way better. Now on that switch, I was pretty much hoping for the Swamper to come out so that it would re it would be immune to the Thunderbolt, but it would be baited in because I would still have Grass Knot. But that's okay. I'm not worried about that. Now she still does have to be cautious about going for the Fighting type move because I still could go for. Chandelier, have it miss, and then retaliate back. But she's just going to go for the high jump kick. Almost takes me out. She is below 50% now. So now, if I predict her to go for a high jump kick, she will kill herself to high jump kick recoil. But she predicts me to switch out to do that. And I'm just going to stay in because I figured, you know, Electros is pretty much expendable at this point. Now, I end up living the rock side on 2 HP, and I can go for a Thunderbolt, which is not going to be enough to take it out. But I am going to get the Paralysis. Which is, that's just unfortunate hacks, you know, none of us really enjoy hacks anyway. But, it turns out she is packing a Sucker Punch, and the Sucker Punch is going to be able to take me out from this range. Now, since it is paralyzed, I am able to go into a position where I could go into something slower and take it out. Now, I'm going to take this opportunity, I'm going to go into Rhyperior. Now, if I go into Rhyperior, uh, I can take it out with an Earthquake and then deal with whatever she wants to deal with later on. Now, it turns out, this is what I was fearing before. I didn't go for the I didn't go for the rock blast here, which I probably should have. I wasn't sure if it was gonna kill because uh, I don't know. I just I didn't want to risk it. Now I'm gonna go for the earthquake. She ends up bringing the Gengar in, which now I'm in a real pickle because I this could threaten me out. I don't know if it has energy ball. I, Shadow ball would still do a lot. It could possibly be carrying Will O Wisp. I don't want to be burned, so I'm gonna go into Hooters here, hoping that I could take a Sludge Bomb. I do have my Citrus Berry over the what is it the leftovers today. I don't know why, I just had Citrus Berry on it, and I figured that would be a good thing today. I, honestly, lucky choice. So I end up taking the Will-O-Wisp. Now she's going to go for a Sludge Bomb. I need to take this. I have massive special bulk, so I am confident that I can take at least one. I will get the Citrus Berry, which is going to put me up back around about a little bit above 40%. Now I'm going to go for a Psycho Shift. She showed me that she has Life Orb, and now with Life Orb damage, or Life Orb recoil, excuse me, and the burn damage, that's going to rack up on her and help me take down this huge threat because Gengar really, you know, puts a hole in my team. Now, luckily, I am able to take another Sludge Bomb, and because I Psycho Shifted the Burn to her, I'm going to be able to live this and go for a Defog. Get those rocks out, which now makes my Chandelier much more of a threat to her team, and I'm also not going to have so much switching pressure. Now, I could have gone for a Roost, but I figured, you know, I'm not going to sit here and Roost stall. It's not my way of playing it's not my kind of game style so i'm just going to go for the default get the rocks out i could have gone for a nightshade as well which would have uh, helped bring this down a little bit quicker but i figured from this range of health i could get my plan off successfully with mega gardevoir now i'm bringing in mega gardevoir i'm slower uh it's super effective against me you may be thinking squid what are you thinking this is a silly situation and you're handling this crazy my friends i have a plan remember I told you I had a, a trick up my sleeve. I am running a mixed Gardevoir with Shadow Sneak. Just on the off chance that one of my massive special attacks isn't going to be enough to kill. Turns out that this isn't enough to kill here. I needed at least one more turn of Life Orb and Burn to take it down with that. But uh, she ends up going for the Destiny Bond. You know, because she would Destiny Bond me, I would end up taking her out. And then she would completely demolish me. But I do feel like a Life Orb Sludge Bomb would have taken me out uh, regardless. She was Life Orbed. I'm sure it was timid, would have outsped. So I end up tiptoeing my way around the Gengar. Now she is going to go into the Moltres here. She's going to show me that she's Scarfed, which is very good knowledge because if she's locked into a move, uh, then she has to keep switching out. So I need to find a position where I can get my rocks up. Now here she was uh, pretty much checking to see if I was carrying the Thunderbolt, learn my whole set. 
And uh, then she baited me with the Swampert after dodging the Thunderbolt to check if I had that. She's going to check if I have Energy Ball by switching back into the Hitmontop, which turns out now she gets the knowledge that I don't carry Energy Ball and I just go for a Psy Shock. Now, what she's going to do here is she's going to go back into her Moltres. Now, I know I could stay in because, one, I could take another U-turn, and two, I know I could take any special hit just because my special bulk uh, is so massive for Mega Gardevoir. I'm not positive what it is right off the bat, but it's definitely more than the average Gardevoir. Now, I'm just going to go for Psy Shock for the safe play in case you want to U-turn again, but I'm going to switch out here because, one, she's locked into Air Slash. I know I resist that with Rhyperior. And the fact that she's below 50% means if I can get late game Stealth Rocks up, this giant, you know, offensive specially attacking threat that's Scarfed is no longer going to be a threat. Because now I could scare her out with the Rock Blast. And by scaring her out, I will be able to get my Stealth Rocks up. So now it's going to die on re-entry. So now all I have to deal with now is I have to find my way around the Gramble. And while I, I need to take out the Gramble to get to the Swampert, and let Rhyperior go down, so I can get a free switch into my Chandelure, which can deal with both the Gramble and the Swamper, because I'm pretty sure Gramble is not going to be taking a Fire Blast too well, especially from, you know, barely above 50%, and I also carry the Energy Ball, which will help me deal with the Swampert, so I will be able to take that out, it's four times weak, I have a humongous special attack investment. Now, she ends up going for a T-Wave, predicting me to switch out after my Earthquake, or after the Intimidate, so I would switch out, but I end up not. This situation is more, uh, I've done my job, I've walled things that I needed to, and now I can just start firing off Earthquakes, because I, that's all I really need to do. There's no other purpose for that, for Rhyperior to be around, because I got my rocks up, it walled everything before, and the rest of my team can pretty much handle her, because once I get past the Rhyperior, I just need to get that free switch into Chandelure. This part I did speed up because it's literally just, it's just in terms of Earthquake. I'm shaking like an Earthquake, and this is, that's it. That's all was needed to happen. Now, the thing is, we're just going to sit here and wait this out. But uh, I'm just waiting for Rhyperior to go down. This is also showing how bulky, you know, Rhyperior is with max HP, max defense. I'm pretty sure in that, that big series here, I took at least three or four earthquakes and still just ended up living. I'm four, no, I'm only two times weak to that. I was hoping that she would have just went for a waterfall. And it would have taken me out a little bit quicker. But this is what I was talking about is where I get the free switch into my chandelier. I will be able to go for an energy ball. And from 50%, uh, even with the assault vest, the four times weakness is not going to be enough to hang on. And uh, she just has to switch into her Moltres here. And that's going to end up being the game. But this was an awesome game. I really enjoyed it. Animal, great battle. Uh, definitely looking forward to uh, any more battles we may have in the future. So this is going to be the game. Once again, guys, thank you for 200 subs. Stay tuned for more battles, and I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.